And now to see our systematic sampling in action. We're going to create a systematic sample of 12 quiz scores. And to create a systematic sample, first, we need a starting place. Notice it also tells us count 10 quiz scores. So our K in systematic sampling is going to be 10. Let's grab our starting place. So we're back at random.org to our true random number generator. We need a starting place. Let's start at 49. So 49 would be here. We're going to record that first quiz score. So seven is taken. Then we count 10 quiz scores. Well, 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. It makes it kind of nice because then we take this row. So we count 10, we count 10. We're gonna wrap back around, count 10, count 10, count 10. And then to get our next six, from this eight, we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but we're not going to take seven. We're going to jump down to the next number. And so here, now that we count 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, two more, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, one more, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and that concludes our systematic sample. We could have chosen k to be a different number instead of 10, it could have been 12, it could have been 4, it could have been 15. We could have selected it randomly, but here we're given count every 10th one and we're able to grab that sample. So looking at these four different types of sampling techniques, hopefully you can see the differences between them and be able to recognize those different ways of sampling if you're given a scenario that describes the sampling. Can you identify which sampling technique it is?